Hello, I'm Mr. Cooper. I'm a director of science for Outer Greens Academy's Trust, and here we've got a lesson for resistance in a wire. So if you can, can you remove all distractions and you'll need a pen and paper. Let's go with the first starter activity. From the previous lesson, you would uh, know this equation. So can you write down the equation that can be used to calculate resistance from current and potential difference? And you've got 60 seconds to complete this. Okay, let's see what can we can remember from previous lesson. So we should know, um, we should be able to recall and reply this equation uh, when we do our GCSEs exams. So V equals IR, voltage, which is potential difference, equals current multiplied by resistance. Current is measured in amps and resistance is measured in ohms. Okay, so today's lesson, we're going to use graphs to analyze data and quantitatively explain how length affects resistance in a wire. And we're all going to, also going to explain how length of a wire at a constant temperature affects the resistance of a circuit. So how does resistance of a wire depend on its length? A dimmer switch allows you to control the brightness of a lamp. And sometimes we have those in our rooms, uh, in, in our houses. Today's lesson, you're going to investigate how the dimmer switch works. You will construct a circuit to measure the potential difference across a wire and the current in a wire. And you'll do this at different lengths of a wire. So for this experiment, you're going to need the following, a battery or power supply, a meter or a multimeter, a voltmeter or a multimeter, some crocodile clips, resistance wire and connecting leads. If you can make a note of these, uh, this equipment you'll need ready for when you write up the experiment. And here's a diagram of the experiment in the top right. You've got an ammeter that's in series with the resistance wire and you've got a, a voltmeter that's in parallel to the resistance wire and you've also got the power pack. If you can copy this table down we see we've got the four columns, we've got length of the wire, we've got potential difference, current and resistance. In this experiment, the independent variable is the thing that we're going to change and we're going to change the length of the wire. Now what I'd like you to do is watch the following demonstration and can you write down the key terms being used to explain what's happening you'll need to write down certain notes ready to write down the experiment write-up at the end of this lesson. Okay, so this is our experiment to look at the relationship between length of a wire and resistance. As you can see, we've got a power pack, we've got an ammeter that's reading the current and that's connected in series, and we've got a voltmeter that's connected in parallel across the wire. In the middle, you can see the meter ruler and the wire sellotape to the center of it. We're going to adjust the length of the wire just by moving this end every 20 centimeters, and we're going to take the readings from both the ammeter and the voltmeter. So if we turn it on, we can see we've got a reading there. We've got the length of 100. We've got a voltage reading of 2.45 and a current reading of 0 0.31. We're going to leave resistance column until the end once we've got all of our other results. So if we move the, we 
switch the power off, we move the crocodile clips to 80, so we're moving them every 20 centimetres, and then we turn the power pack back on. And as you can see, we now got a different reading of 2.42 of voltage and a current reading of 0.38. We then turn the power pack off and then we move the crocodile clips another 20 centimeters down to 60. We turn the power pack back on We've got 60 centimetres. We've got a voltage reading of 2.38 and a current reading of 0.48 at 60 centimetres. We then turn the power pack back off and we move the crocodile clips another 20 centimetres down to 40 centimetres. We then take the readings, so for voltage we've now got a reading of 2.30, just let it settle, and then we've got a current reading of 0 0.70. And then switch it off, for the final one we move down to 20 centimetres. Turn the power pack back on and there we can see we've got a voltage now of 2.04 and a current reading of 1.29. So there we've got a full set of results. We could probably see certain patterns forming with the, with the current. But for this particular experiment, we're looking at the length of the wire and we're going to compare, compare that against the resistance. So we're now going to calculate resistance. Okay, so now we've got a full set of results. In order to compare the two, we need to calculate resistance and then we're going to compare that against the length of the wire. So in previous lessons, we've looked at this equation where you've got potential difference, which is volts, equals current multiplied by resistance. Now, obviously, we don't have resistance in this, in this particular table. Therefore, we're going to rearrange this equation in order to get R on its own or make R the subject. So V equals I times R. We know if we divide both sides by I, 1 divided by 1 equals 1, so we can cancel those two out, and then we're left with V divided by I equals R. So V divided by I equals R. So we'll be calculating resistance by dividing volts by the current. So there's that first example, the volts 2.45 divided by 0 0.31 2.45 divided by 0.31 which gives us 7.90 ohms so our first result 7.90 Resistance is measured in ohms, and therefore we just need to do the same equation for all the others going down.
Now, we can look at resistance, what's happening to resistance as the length of the wire gets shorter. And from this one, we can see before we've even drawn the graph, we can see that we've got resistance high and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller as long as well as length getting shorter and shorter. Okay, now that we've calculated and recorded the resistance, we need to plot a graph. Now on this graph, we're gonna have resistance on the Y axis and then the length of wire on the X axis. And there's a diagram on the next slide that helps you out with this. Okay, so here we have the two axes. You've got length of the wire on the X axis in centimeters and you've got resistance in ohms on the y-axis. If we continue to, to plot on the graph, we've got the distance and we've got the resistance up the side. Now using the along the corridor up the stairs method, if we go along 20 centimetres, we know that we can go up to 1.58 ohms. If we continue to do that using our table of results that we got from the previous slide, we should be able to get a full set of results and a nice, neat, straight line of best fit that's going through the origin. So what I'd like you to do now is using the assess practical structure write a sentence or a paragraph for each of the bullet points on the following slide you may need to pause this clip uh, at each slide as we go along but i'll quickly read through them so within your assess practical structure you need to add the following a title and date an aim which is a brief description of the experiment hypothesis which includes independent and dependent variable Remember, an independent variable is the thing that you changed, and in this experiment, it was length of the wire. And the dependent variable is what you measured. The equipment and any risks that you think are involved within this experiment. Make sure that you include the independent variable and its unit, the dependent variable and its unit, any control variables, which at least two and a, a brief des description of, of how you've controlled them and their impact on the experiment. A step-by-step -step method and a circuit diagram and any results which you've recorded, including the graph. Finally, a brief analysis, a description of what the results show, any patterns that the data shows and you can use your graph in order to to highlight some of these points and then an evaluation this includes any difficulties that you've experienced while carrying out the experiment any advantages or disadvantages of the technique and equipment used, and any discussions that you have of an alternative method okay so how does the resistance of a wire depend on its length well from our graph we should see that if you increase the length you therefore increase the resistance a shorter length would involve a, a, a lower amount of resistance so this is exactly how a dimmer switch would work as you control the brightness of the lamp what you're doing is you're increasing or you're decreasing the length of the wire which increases or decreases the resistance accordingly. Okay, that concludes our lesson on an introduction to resistance. Thank you for listening.